Okay, good. They've arrived. Five mil, sorry, six mil or M6 nuts. And a uh, hundred of those in there, just for doing the dry fit. So I stick those on because I've run out of, of nuts that came with the kit and to be honest with you, they're needed. So these for the dry fit. Uh, put the nylox on when we're ready for the final fit. We're having a barbecue. wheeling these out it's uh, more challenging than you'd think uh, it's tough stuff but that's okay the, the flat wheel will cut through I don't want a flat wheel that cuts through too coarsely but uh, it's a matter of working these things gently bit by bit so that uh, the fit is relatively snug there's no uh, masses of play but there's also no binding and even if you get a tiny little bit of a of a ridge or a lump or a bit of out of concentric, that one little spot can cause friction when these are tightened down um, that inhibits the free movement of the pedal. And then you're tempted just to come and keep sanding the whole bit. So you, you'll sand that out, but work everything else out bigger. So you've got to go bit by bit. And what I've been doing now is, is I've actually just been bolting these together like this and then putting a flat wheel through the center to try and keep it concentric. The flat wheel um, is a nice snug fit in there, but uh, it, it's still hard going because you, you kind of have to put a bit of downwards pressure to get a bit of bite into the nylon with the flat wheel. And then you've got to rotate it you know, 360 degrees and then turn it around the other way um, just in case, you know, it's, it's also not, you know, not completely parallel, if that's the right word, you know. Um, you want these to be, uh, you want it to be tubular. Well, I don't know what the right word is, but you get the drift. So, and there's three of these and they, they take a lot of on and off and working to get right and maybe i'm being over cautious maybe guys with experience just rafe the material out and aren't too worried get a nice slack fit and it all stays together uh nicely but but me i'm frightened of um you know taking out too much material overdoing things and that's probably lack of experience but i think it's also a bit of wise caution so working on these gently bit by bit um you know, they, they you can swallow up days just doing these. I, I did do with the 
control uh, assembly bushings. You know, days are spent just playing around getting that right. I got it right in the end, so I'm quite pleased, but uh, I'll continue. So we've done a little bit of primary. Um, I've just cleaned up those ends. You remember they were, the paint was off because we'd clamped them and uh, cleaned them, used a bit of uh, panel degreaser uh, to clean them up with, and then uh, we've primed them. Uh, what do we use? We use this um, for us primer. It's actually, this is actually from, from Spain when I lived in Spain. Um, so but it's a ferrous primer uh, a lot of people use etch primer um, but you don't need to you can use etch primer on steel but etch primer is not needed on steel it's needed on aluminium um, i prefer a proper ferrous primer the etch primer is kind of acid based and what it does is uh, if there's any oxide on there like aluminium oxide uh, it, it etches through the oxide uh, because it's an acid uh, and it allows some grab. Um, that doesn't happen on, on steel because you clean it up, it doesn't sort of flash oxidize straight away. And you're better off using a ferrous primer because um, they usually contain zinc. I, I like zinc based ferrous primers and the zinc actually bonds uh, with, the, uh, with the steel and creates a corrosion resistant layer. So, um, those are primers. I, I hear a lot of people talking about etch primers on steel. They're, they're not necessary. I prefer a zinc-based primer. But there we go. Those have been done, as you can see. I've been working on a colour scheme. I've got some ideas for colour. A few of you have, uh, have given me some hints of what you like. I know what I like. I'm still torn between a few different things. But I'm, I'm working on an idea that I'm going to surprise you with. Um, let's see. Anyway onwards and we go so uh, prime it to protect it and fasten back on again nice and rigid hey look at that free and easy so where are we then oh back to this job boring job flat wheeling out these a lot looser but I haven't got, uh, I'm only fastened one in at the moment. That's a bit stiffer, as you can see. And these have to return to neutral on the return spring. So um, I've just marked that. So I know which is the front, because this front one is, is a bit tighter. The back one, that seems loose enough. So a bit more work on the front and then the other flat wheels. The other bushings, should I say. All right, so finally finished um, flat wheeling them out. Small amount of friction, they don't free fall, but I didn't want to go any further. They they actually feel loose enough. You can, oops, you can throw them around. Um, we'll see how we go. There's gonna be a return spring on there and uh, We'll see how it feels. We can always flat wheel it out a little bit more, but that's good enough for now. Let's see how that is. So next then, uh, we'll be rudder cables, I believe. Okay, so this is the rudder cable. Um, the instructions tell you to cut the rudder cable in half to make two five meter sections, but uh, it's already come in two five meter sections. I think that's a good idea. Um, I've got a bit of heat shrink sleeving here. The idea is we'll use that to cover this end, stop it fraying. Two uh, nicker press fastenings, whatever they call them, I forget the name now, but um, two of those. Um, one of these eyes, and this will be coming around through those two, and then crimped. I've got not the nicker press tool. Uh, but I do have this Rhino uh, kind of compre uh, crimping tool and um, the knicker press fits into there perfectly. So um, I think I'll be able to use that uh, to compress that cable clamp. Let's see. 
Well, welcome back again. What have we been up to this week? Uh, not made a great deal of progress this week. Uh, I've not had that much time off work and I've been playing around with a new drone. You get a new toy and, uh, you know, you stop playing with your old toys. Uh, but I'm back on the old toy at the moment. I've not really done much. It's just been flat wheeling out uh, those rudder controls, getting them sort of nice and loose. I think they're about where I want them now. Uh, I might have to do a little bit more work on them, but for now, I, I think they're probably about right. Uh, I've also then um, started to add the linkage that's going to go to the rudder cable. Uh, there was a little bit more of that kind of reaming work to be done. These little brackets, they, they have uh, little brass bushes in the middle, a bit of reaming work and a little bit of sanding of those very tiny bushes because they, they wouldn't go in very, very easily. Uh, they're in now. I made a bit of a mistake, uh, I'll be honest with you. So uh, here's the rudder cable. We kind of uh, look here in the kit, when you look at the instruction manual, it tells you you get a 10 meter cable and you have to cut it in half, two five meter cables. Uh, it's already cut in half. Um, so I was glad because, you know, sometimes when you, you cut cable, if you don't have the right tools, don't know whether I have, um, you make a mess. Um, so it already came cut, quite pleased, but I did make a mistake. So here we, we have um, the linkage. That linkage, um, you can see that uh, is what's reamed out. That's what has a bush in it and that goes to some threads uh, that are on the rudder pedals. Um, you have to get this. Can you see um, this here? It's called a thimble, I believe, and the thimble has to go through this hole. And when you get it, the thimble doesn't go through the hole. It's a bit wide, you know, this, this width profile uh, is slightly too wide for the hole. So what you have to do um, is you have to put the thimble in, in, in a vise. I put it in a vise again. Uh, I could use a press. I've got a bearing press, but it's a bit out of the way, so I just used the vise. I gave it a bit of a squeeze, and it just squeezed it enough, um, and then it goes in through the hole. And uh, so the, this is three mil uh, steel rope, it goes through that hole. But here's the mistake. So you have these um, ferrules, uh, they call, these copper ferrules. And um, these are nika press ferrules. And, and you're supposed to use uh, a swaging tool to compress those and to compress them onto the, um, onto the steel rope. Well... I don't have a swaging tool. I do have a, a press for a ratchet press, quite a good one that I bought when I was in Australia. And um, it's got nearly every die that goes in it except, um, except the swaging tool for this. So I used something that was very similar. There was kind of, uh, you know, a, a, a crimp press there that, that fitted these lovely and, and, and it worked. I pressed them and crimped them and, uh, and they've crimped on there and they're on very, very tight. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't believe they'll, they'll move at all. Uh, I think they're fine. But after I did it, I regretted it because I thought um, it's not right. That's not how it's supposed to be crimped. So it's kind of a bodge in a way, isn't it? I've taken a shortcut and I vowed not to do that. And after I'd done it, um, I regretted it so I decided I'm not going to stick with that so what I've got to do now is I've got to remove these uh, so a bit of careful work with with the Dremel and it should come off they copper they're fairly soft I should be able to get those off without touching the uh, the steel wire uh, and I've ordered a proper swaging tool and some more ferrules so um, I broke another one of those cardinal sins, you know. The first one, if you remember, was don't buy cheap tools. Uh, the second one was don't don't take any shortcuts. Um, and I did. And now I regret it. So I've got to wait several days. So that's kind of slowed things down. But um, but the next stage then is, you know, is the, is the rudder cable. So we'll do this properly. Um, we'll stop being a body artist and... Uh, but we'll do that properly and, uh, and hopefully 
jobs are good. So, um, there we are. The uh, pulleys I didn't mention. I kind of showed you last on the last video a few clips of uh, just bending up metal brackets to put pulleys on. Those, but they're not actually brackets. They're actually cable guides. Uh, they're put on. I've got a bit of shaping to do some smoothing of the corners, but the cable guides and the pulleys are are actually on the aeroplane ready for the cables and the rudder cables go from the rudders they go through cable guides so they've got nylon sleeves in between it crosses over at the back and goes to the rudders right it's like christmas i've just been opening um <laughs> the rest of the stuff that i got with the fuselage kit um we've got these things i believe these are called ribs made out of wood not just two we've got loads of them um, and I think these are for the horizontal stabiliser one at each side look and like these um, one two three I believe these are for um, the vertical stabiliser uh, pretty gnarly, pretty gnarly just there, look. Come on, focus. Tracking, there we go. Bit gnarly, it needs a bit of sanding, but that's in the instructions. Uh, to do a little bit of sanding, just to clean some of these up. Uh, these were beautiful, these were really smooth and, and nice. These are a little bit more gnarly, but um, gnarly, there's a word. Well, we'll we'll clean these up. Um, the idea is, I did think in the kit though there was the ones for the um, for the elevator and the rudder, but they're not in this kit. That's bizarre, isn't it? Let's check, make sure I'm not missing something. Um, that's the must come in a different kit. It's a bit strange though. I've got the elevator and the rudder. You think the Foot ribs would come with this kit, seeing as I've got the ones for the tailplane. But anyway, um, I'm going to be sanding them up, uh, smoothing them. We're going to uh, uh, use a two-pack clear coat. I've decided instead of getting out the spray and spraying it, you know, because the, the finish isn't important as long as they're um, covered and sealed. Uh, I'm just going to thin down the uh, the two-pack, and I'll paint it on with a paintbrush, a bit like a varnish. So. Um, that should probably uh, do these fine. These here, these are the cap strips. I believe these go over. Um, I've got to buy some epoxy. The I've, I've bought the kit in stages. So uh, I've ordered, first of all, I started with the fuselage kit. The problem is, is this is a bit, I thought it was a good idea to do that. I just wanted to stage the expenditure and just stage the build. I don't have much room. To be piling stuff in here the issue is some of the bits you need now are in some of the other kits and the epoxy is one of them so it's kind of making it a bit more expensive because i've got to order the epoxy um, from here separate to the kit so i'm doing that um, cap strips vertical and horizontal ribs yeah um, anyway, so I've ordered that. So we're sanding these. This is tomorrow's job. It's, it's getting a bit dark now, a bit late in the evening. Um, and I'm a bit tired. So I, I just wanted to, to open a few things uh, like Christmas. We'll be sanding these down. We'll be sealing them all. Uh, I've just been waiting to take some advice. Other stuff in the, uh, in the kit. Um, that's the trim assembly. It's a, a electric actuated trim. Uh, this is a piano hinge. It's a bit of a, it's a bit wonky, uh, but it straightens up, I'm sure. Uh, it's a piano hinge. That's going to be for the uh, for the elevator trim. This is the elevator trim. Okay, um, to trim the elevator. So you see, this is all tailplane stuff. Um, whoops! These are the butt ribs. These go, I believe, for the wings. Um, go up against the side of the aeroplane 
when do we put these in? I don't know. Get back to the instructions. But uh, laser cut aluminium butt ribs. And that's the elevator trim cover. Okay, FEC with a date on it there. 1st of July 22. Must be an inspection date, or is it the dude that made it? FET, you're a bit wonky. I have to file and smooth that. Hey. Um, and then we've got four of these, the two in each pack. Um, butt rib, bottom angle. Okay, so there must be something to do with this butt rib here I don't know does that go there on there somehow probably this tape there just getting in the way so we'll have to figure that out um, so that's all the toys I've opened everything and uh, there's nothing left really nothing left that I haven't seen um, I'm just surprised about me me rudder me rudder ribs not to worry I'm sure they come in on the kit anyway um, going in I'll probably stitch this bit together another small video uh, you have to let me know how you like these videos as well I've done some that are about 10 minutes long some that are about 30 minutes long uh, sometimes I think 30 minute videos are a bit long little 10 minute sections frequently um, it might be easier but you tell me what you prefer again just leave leave me a note in the comments down below anyway Thank you for watching again. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget, please hit that subscribe button. Um, hit the bell icon, you'll get notifications. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.